Well, hello, A Place Along the Way family. It is Psalm 21 day. Glad to be with you today. Please continue to pray for Pastor Jeff. He still has not awakened since they took him off of sedation. Um, but things are progressing. Um, and so maybe he will today. But I decided to be patient and wait on the Lord which is supposed to be our good pleasure, according to the word. All right, Psalm 21, book one, glasses off, joy in the salvation of the Lord. To the chief musician, a Psalm of David. The king shall have joy in your strength, O Lord, and in your salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire. You have not withheld the request of his lips, Selah. For you meet him with the blessings of goodness. You set a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked life from you, and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in your salvation. Honor and majesty you have placed upon him. For you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Sorry, y'all, I'm looking off because I realized I didn't read some um, notes in my Bible when we did. <laughs> in, my, in my study Bible when we did Psalm 19. So maybe I'll catch that up later. Um, my bad. All right, so let's see where we're. You have been, you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Your hand will find all your enemies. Your right hand will find those who hate you. You shall make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their offspring you shall destroy from the earth, and their descendants from among the sons of men. For they intended evil against you. They devised a plot which they are not able to perform. Therefore, you will make them turn their back. You will make ready your arrows on your string toward their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own strength. We will sing and praise your power. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's see what the Bible study notes are for Psalm 21. Let's make sure I'm not skipping any like I did for Psalm 19. Okay, so 21 for verses 1 through 13. This psalm seems to be a thankful praise for victory in response to the previous pleas in Psalm 20. Some commentators, as well as Jewish rabbis, see here a prophetic type of King Messiah, Jesus, ascending in victory. Verse 3, for example, after victory over the Ammonites, David received the royal crown of the conquered king, 2 Samuel 12, 30. Verse 7, most high, is a title for God, Hebrew Elion. Verse 8, will find means will seek out the fleeing or retreating enemy. Verse 9, fiery oven. God's judgment is often described as fire, Malachi 4.1, and it is declared that this will be the means of bringing the final judgment day to a conclusion, 2 Peter 3.7. Verse 10, offspring. Having no one to carry on the family name was considered a great curse in the Middle Eastern culture. And that is it. I'm going to go ahead and add the Psalm 19 bonus notes. 
I read the notes before it and that were for each of verse for Psalm 19, but I didn't read, I don't think I read these two um, connotations that went with them. So they were, for Psalm 19, it says, and I might have read Psalm 19 from a different Bible. Y'all remember that. It was the situation where I didn't have the study Bible. So this says for Psalm 19, verse 7, the complete trustworthiness of the Bible. That's this note. It says, the word of God, that the law of the Lord is perfect, is direct reference to the absolute, complete, and entire trustworthiness of the Holy Scriptures, which constitute the Bible. The word of God is perfect in its accuracy and sure in its dependability. Two terms are generally used to describe these features of God's work. One is inerrant or perfect. It means that in the original copies of each manuscript written by each Bible book's respective author, there was nothing mistaken or tinged with error. Further, the excellence of the Holy Spirit's protection of the scriptures over the centuries has ensured that the copies delivered into our hands from generations past is essentially the same. Even literary critics who claim no faith in the truth of the Bible attest to its being the most completely reliable of any book transmitted from antiquity in terms of its actually remaining unchanged and dependably accurate. And number two, it is infallible, referring to the fact that the Bible is unfailing as an absolute trustworthy guide for our faith or belief in God and practice or life and behavior. This is so because God is true, John 3, 33 and 17, 3, because his word reveals his truth, John 17, 17, and because God cannot lie, Numbers 23, 19, Titus 1 and 2, sorry, Titus 1 verse 2, Hebrews and Hebrews 6, 18. And then there's also notes for, um, or notation for 2 Timothy 3, 16 and Proverbs 30 verses 5 and 6. And then for 19, um, there's a note for acceptable speech before God. And it says, faith's confession. This oft-quoted verse attests, that's, um, I don't know if I said Psalm 19, verse 14. This oft-quoted verse attests to the importance and desirability of our words and thoughts being consistent with God's word and will. The text literally says, let what I speak and what my heart murmurs to itself be a delight to you, Lord. Clearly, the acceptability of our words in God's sight is dependent upon their being consistent with what our hearts feel or think. The truth of this text urges us to always speak the kind of words that confirm what we believe or think in our hearts about God, his love, and his power. If we believe yet contradict that belief, with careless words from our mouth, it is not acceptable in God's sight. Remember the lesson of Cain's sacrifice, Genesis 4, 1 through 7. What is unacceptable is not only faithless and fruitless, it may also become deadly. And see 2 Chronicles 6, 24 through 31 and Proverbs 16, 23 and 24. All right, you guys, thank you so much. Again, please continue to pray. Keep me, our family, and your thoughts and prayers. And um, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I love you. I miss you. And I will see you tomorrow.